So uh, imagine this, you got the slide on the screen there, right? So I was 2,500 miles from home in a hotel lobby having breakfast one morning and two strangers were staring at me. Uh, two guys I'd never met were kind of staring at me. It's kind of awkward sitting there, people watching me eat breakfast. So I got up after I finished my breakfast and walked over to them and they said, hey, are you Ashley McGlone? And I'm like, yeah, why? It's like, well, we, uh, I think you taught us PowerShell. We've watched all your videos. Uh, and turns out they were uh, other employees. And at the time I worked for Microsoft and I was traveling and I was on a gig in the field. That's what I did. And uh, this scene repeated itself uh, more times than, than I can uh, have time to tell. And it's been a lot of fun just uh, being recognized. Not that I'm a celebrity, you know, you, you go to a family reunion, you talk about PowerShell and people just give you a blank stare. But there's a few people that uh, kind of knew who I was. But rewind the clock uh, before that to January 4th of 2010. And I had gone to Redmond for uh, three weeks of new employee orientation at Microsoft. And uh, that was cool. And, and I was like, wake up. I, man, you, I pinch me, right? Uh, I'm, I'm in this dream. I'm working for Microsoft. How is this possible? Uh, but then all of a sudden it hit me like, wait a minute, there's a high bar to get hired here. And I now have 100,000 new coworkers that are very competitive. And how am I going to differentiate myself uh, in a company this large and this competitive? And little did I know that uh, within a year or two, people all over the world would know who I was, would be watching my videos, reading my blog posts. I had no idea that that was coming. And these are some of the opportunities that working for Microsoft gave me. But I want to tell you who are here now in the room, you don't have to work for a big tech company to do what I did in building a personal brand. And I'm going to tell you how to do that today, or I'm going to tell you my story, how I built a personal brand and how it automated my career. So my name is Ashley McGlone, and today I'm a technology strategist for a company called Tanium, uh, formerly based in the Bay Area, now based in Kirkland, uh, right next to you there in Bellevue. Uh, where you are today. So uh, there's my uh, Twitter handle. You can catch up with me online if you'd like to. I'd love to talk to you more about these topics after we're done today. So let's start out and talk about what is a personal brand, right? It's basically your reputation. Uh, you know, back in the day, a good name, right, is worth a lot. You want to have a good name with uh, your peers and people that know you. So think about your personal brand as what do people get when they work with you? You know, what's, what's when somebody, when your name comes up in conversation, what's the first thing that crosses their mind? Is it good or bad? You know, are they, oh, like, oh, I get to work with that person. Yay. You know, that's what we want. Right. And so uh, in this age where we are now, though, it's an online world. And so what I want to talk about specifically is not just a, a personal brand, but an, a personal brand online that will open doors for you. So when you think about it, uh, if you're interviewing for another position uh, or uh, just in general, uh, when people search for you online, what do they find? Do they find anything at all? Do they find at least a LinkedIn profile or maybe, maybe Twitter? Uh, and then what do they find in that feed once they're reading things that you've posted? You know, is it safe for work, <laughs> so to speak? But more than that, are, do they see a demonstrated commitment to advancing the community and to contributing to the conversation, right? So uh, this can really open doors for you and make your interview an afterthought. Uh, when I interviewed for the current position at the company that I have now, uh, one of the interviews was a tech panel with three other guys. And uh, for an hour, uh, hour and a half or so, they were grilling me on technical topics. But one of the people in my tech panel interview had already been following me online for three or four years. So they knew who I was. And it, it made the interview a lot more fun and a lot more uh, engaging, I think. So uh, you can automate your career by, captive, uh, by cultivating an online presence. So uh, I'll, I'll talk about this in, in three bullets today. Uh, and I, I view this kind of like art. 
uh, building your brand uh, is kind of a bit artistic. And so there's a mission, a message, and a media. And so those are the three big things we're going to take away today. What's your mission? What's your message? And what's your media? As we think about the components of a brand. So, so think about it just for a second. Why are we here? And not in a metaphysical sense, but why are we in this room uh, at this event, right? It's because we're here because we want to learn. And who better to learn from than someone who's been there before they have the experience and they can help us with their experience. This experience is a great teacher, especially if it's someone else's, right? You don't have to go through the hard knocks when somebody, when you can benefit from somebody else's experience. And there's a guy years ago named Zig Ziglar, who was famous for this saying that said, if you help enough other people get what they want, you will get what you want. And so you can build your brand as being that person that's helpful. And when people uh, find your stuff in a web search and then they find your stuff again and again, all of a sudden you have a follower and you may not be setting out to have followers necessarily. You're just there to say, hey, look, I had this hard problem at work last week. Here's how I fixed it. And what do you know? There's a hundred other people with the same problem. They found your stuff, right? But, but right away, you might protest and say, now, wait a minute, I don't have anything to teach. I don't have anything to, to talk about. Well, I can tell you that whoever is the most junior person in the room right now could teach me something, I bet. I've been in technology for 40 years, and I have never used Discord, all right? I'm an old fart. I've never played with Discord. I bet some of you in the room could teach me a thing or two, all right? So no matter how young you are getting started in your career, whatever stage you're in, there is something you can teach, I guarantee you. So uh, if you want to take a screenshot or a picture of this uh, slide, this is the magic formula to building your brand online uh, or building a brand really, but doing it in an online fashion, right? So here's what we're going to do. This is our mission. I'm going to help other people. This was my mission. Maybe yours is different, but this is a great way to do it. You're going to build a brand, help other people. Then you record it and then you put it somewhere that other people can find it. All right. That is it. That's how to build a brand, help people record it, put it somewhere others can find it. And you just keep turning that crank and that's going to build your brand. So uh, we're going to talk about the media and in just a second. So, uh, so I help people. All right. So I'm, I have a conversation with a coworker or I'm, or I'm on a Reddit subreddit somewhere and I'm contributing to a conversation or uh, it's, it's a work situation. And so I, I come up with a solution. Uh, maybe it's a PowerShell script or maybe it's something to do with uh, DevOps here and CI, CD uh, techniques, whatever, you know, maybe it's Python, whatever you're automating. And so you record it. So that means you make a YouTube video, you write it down in a blog post, you, you put it some, then you put that somewhere people can find it and you just keep doing that. And before you know it, you, you create a body of work online that people can find that makes you searchable and you just keep turning that crank. There's a lot to unpack here. So that's what we're going to keep talking about. So you help people, you record it, you put it somewhere others can find it. And, and that's actually um, the way I built my brand. I didn't start out to build a brand. Um, I started out just to help people because I was at the time working for Microsoft doing an Active Directory assessment. And I would go to them and then we'd run these tools and we'd say, here's all the stuff you need to fix in your environment. Good luck. I'll see you next year. And hopefully it's fixed by then. And I'm like, wait a minute. Um, you know, there was a lot more to it than that, right? Here's what our recommendations are, but you know, good luck fixing it. You know, we can engage our services if you'd like some help. Wink, wink. Uh, but I thought, wait a minute, that can't be our story. So what I started doing at the time was Active Directory and PowerShell, <clears throat> and I started writing scripts to do things to help people to fix their Active Directory problems. And <clears throat> over time. Um, as I'm uh, working with different uh, IT shops around the United States, showing them uh, flaws in their Active Directory configuration, uh, things or whatever, I started writing these helper scripts for them, uh, whether it was a group policy or SID history or uh, cleaning up, you know, things, whatever, uh, attribute recovery, some challenging situations. And I uh, just put those things out there and people started finding it. And uh, I showed up on site for a customer one day and he had printed out the all five blog posts and all the code that I had done for this particular thing. And it was his like project manual that he was using to solve this problem at work. 
And so I was doing that just to help people. And I put it somewhere they could find it. And all of a sudden, just turn that crank. And before you know it, uh, you've got some awareness out there that turns into a personal brand. So why do you want to build a personal brand? We talked about that a little bit uh, before the session started, but Maybe you want a bridge out of a job that's not fulfilling for you. Uh, maybe you want to climb the ladder in your current job or get that promotion. Or maybe you just want more career satisfaction. You want to leave a legacy. Uh, maybe you want to grow your skill set. And this is a great way. Hey, come learn with me. That's a great way to, to uh, bring people along. I'm learning this new technology where you all have to learn it. Let's learn it together. And you blog your you know, adventure. Or you make a YouTube channel, you know, something like that. Or you... Uh, go through plural site and create training videos, right? There's all these different ways you can build your brand. Maybe you just want to travel, meet people, open up some new options uh, and establish your credibility, maybe as a technical contributor. But uh, what happens is if you help enough people, it can tip, it can automate your career and open doors for you. So what do I talk about? So if I, if I want to help people and get involved in the community, so what are some things that I can do? Because, okay, there's, a, there's, there's not a million people blogging about PowerShell, but there's a lot of people out there and some of them are blogging about PowerShell. So what makes mine any different than theirs, right? So I'm going to talk about a couple ways that you can identify what is unique about you and your content and how you can make that uh, relative to others. So here's some ideas on the slide, right? Your niche, we'll talk about that in just a second. Uh, problem solving, you know, real world needs, uh, frequently asked questions. If people ask you the same thing over and over, write a blog post and just give them a link next time, right? And it saves a half hour in your day of explaining the same thing every time. Uh, you know, I did a lot of research in my lab. I'd run into a problem and I'd, I'd go, go into my lab at home and I would uh, model, model it all out and work through the scripting or whatever it was. And then I would put this massive blog post out with tons of screenshots and it was a 10 or 15 minute read. And people would sit there and read the whole thing because it was really meeting a need for them. So that's some of the things you can talk about, but let's talk about who you are and how you can be specific in what you write. So there's this thing called a niche. Uh, it's not niche, it's a niche, right? And so who am I, who is my audience? So for me, um, I did Active Directory and PowerShell was my niche. And then I uh, kind of flipped that after a while and did Active Directory, I did PowerShell with uh, security. And so what I did was I took two interests. Now there were a lot of people that knew Active Directory better than me. And there were a lot of people that knew PowerShell better than me. But when you put those two things together, Active Directory PowerShell suddenly became my specialty. And so that uh, became a niche for me. And uh, I developed a reputation then around that particular segment. So I'm not trying to conquer the world or boil the ocean. Those are an intersection of two of my uh, skills that became an area of expertise for me. There's a guy named Seth Godin that wrote a book. Uh, he's written a lot of books. One of those books, he talked about this concept of a niche. And he said, you can be the best in the world at anything if your niche is small enough. You find two different specialties and intersect them. And all of a sudden, you've got a new specialty there. Now, if he said, if you're the best in the world at koala bear toenail painting, probably not many people going to care. So you got to make it relative, right? So you know, maybe you find... Uh, let's say PowerShell and Python, maybe you do both languages. And so you're the person that people come to when they want to, maybe they know Python, they're trying to learn PowerShell, or maybe they know PowerShell, they're trying to learn Python. So you can be that person in the middle that that could be your, you know, your thing, right? You know, so pick two, two specialties, intersect them, and that becomes your brand, right? So that way you can cut through the noise of all the other content out there and develop a specialty that you're known for then. Another way to do this is just picking the dirty jobs. You know, Mike Rose made this whole thing about dirty jobs. Uh, there's some, some kids wrote a book called do hard things. You know, if you become the problem solver, you know, pick the things that people don't want to touch and they just dread like working with certificates or something. You know, I don't know. I don't know very many people that enjoy anytime the word certificates comes up in a conversation that they're usually, you know, I'm running the other way. Right. So, you know, find those things that are particularly challenging, like Mac OS automation, you know, PowerShell on Mac. There you go. There's a, there's a niche, right? Um, 
uh, database tuning, whatever. Uh, there's a guy on uh, Twitter named Quinny Pig that does AWS build deciphering. Like nobody wants to do that, right? Um, uh, Anthony Nosentino, who's presenting here uh, this week, uh, he does. It's not that people don't want to do what he does, but I've watched some amazing presentations by him where he's really focused uh, in this particular community anyway on the intersection of PowerShell and Linux and open source. Uh, type topics. I know he was doing some Kubernetes stuff uh, today, I think. So you can create, uh, find these things that people don't like to do, and they'll, uh, they're always looking for an answer there because it's hard, right? So you go conquer that hard thing, and all of a sudden, uh, you're going to be their hero. So we've talked about our mission uh, to help other people. We've talked about our message, how to re find our niche, how do you know what do we talk about? So now, where do we do this? What's your media? What's your canvas? What are you working with as an artist, right? So you think about all the different types of ways you can talk about things today. Uh, so you can do in-person events like this, right? So uh, you can do the, the conference user groups, all that. Um, and, and written, wow, there's so many different options for written. You can write books and blogs and articles and uh, newsletters, you name it. You, uh, GitHub counts there too, by the way. If you've published code on GitHub, you're a writer, all right? Uh, or how about, you know, podcasts? Uh, for some reason, podcasts have just exploded. I mean, podcasts have been around for a long time and they've just really taken off even more lately. Uh, and in video, you know, right? Uh, you've got all these different streaming sites, uh, YouTube obviously being the biggest one, but then you've got other places like, uh, you know, plural site and places where you can become a, a published author there. And then you also have options to monetize your brand, you know, so Substack, Patreon, all these different places, you know, again, plural site, uh, places like that, you know, getting paid to write articles. A lot of people do that, you know, taking ads. Now I've crossed out the word books here for monetize. Uh, if you want to build a brand, you can write a book and put your name on a book. And, and that's a great way to get your name out there. But it's not a great way to make money. There's several people at this event this week who have written books, and they'll tell you that. You, know, you don't go write a book if you want to make money and get rich, right? It's because it's a lot of work. And especially in technology, technology moves so fast, that book's got a short shelf life, unless you do it into more of a soft skills angle, perhaps. But anyway, uh, there's lots of different things you can do here as a canvas where you can pick where you want to uh, publish your work and how you want to publish that. So if you think about these kind of falling into categories like in-person, written, audio, video, then one-to-one, -one, you know, one-on-one -on -one mentoring, you know, one-to-many like I'm writing a blog post or many to many where you're collaborating in a forum, right? Or GitHub and people are checking in code, things like that. So here's what I did. Here's how I chose to, to my strategy. I used my blog as my homepage and, and everything that I did went back to that blog, all my social media profiles linked to the blog. Um, all the, the YouTube, you know, links back to the blog. So, you, you know, go to my blog to find the, where the in-depth explanation, right, where I explain everything. You know, my GitHub is linked. Uh, you know, the, the blog writes the, the code and, uh, and explains how the code works when it says go to my GitHub then to find it, you know, download it, right? Uh, your conference stage and user groups. Uh, when I'm speaking, you know, you can find out more about this topic on my blog. And so I used the blog because I had the most control there over what was published and when and how. Um, I chose, so there's lots of blog hosting options out there we don't want to talk about today, uh, but there's lots. Of, so, so you just kind of mix and match, make your own combo so that it, it spreads your influence across multiple platforms that way. And then, but everything comes back to that hub of your, uh, whatever you choose your hub to be. Maybe you're a YouTuber and it's your YouTube channel or you're a streamer on Twitch, all right? So wherever you choose to make your home base and then you just kind of fan out from there, but everything goes back to that one home base. That's the strategy that I took with my online brand. So the other thing is uh, you are me incorporated, right? You put your name in the blank there. Uh, you know, Joe Incorporated. So what is the logo for your brand? Your mugshot is your best logo. A lot of people don't like looking at themselves. They don't like pictures of themselves, but I'm telling you this, this is a great way to do it uh, because 
that uh, picture of you, that avatar will become your personal brand logo. And then you can put that on all of your social media properties, all of your channels, everywhere you are, you put that just like you see Pepsi or Coke or Mountain Dew or whatever, you know, that's the brand recognition, right? So everywhere you have a user profile online, you use that exact same avatar. And that way people can connect your picture with your brand and they know what to expect then. Hey, I just saw that same avatar on YouTube yesterday. Oh, wait. Okay. That's the same person. Yeah. Okay. So that builds your brand and your awareness. So uh, one thing you want to do if, if you decide to launch out and build an online presence as your brand, you want to pick social media handles that are unique. Because uh, you, uh, you know, Joe user is already been taken on three different software or uh, social platforms, let's say. So if you go to this website like Noem, uh, noem dot com, right? You go over there and it will search. You put in potential uh, handles that you want to use, and it will search across all there, and it'll tell you where it's used already or not. So my handle was GoTPFE. Premier field engineer was my job at Microsoft. Unfortunately, now I've left Microsoft and I'm still stuck with GoTPFE as my handle everywhere. And I can't change it because if I do, it'll break a bunch of links everywhere. So pick something that's not exactly tied to your employer. Or I've got another uh, buddy whose uh, his handle was Fix the Exchange. He was an exchange troubleshooter. He's moved past that a long time ago, but now he's got exchange stuck in his title. Don't pick something like that. Pick something that's going to be maybe catchy uh, and kind of branding yourself uh, and something that's going to be unique across all those platforms. Uh, I'll tell you where I got these uh, images. Uh, this first image I've used for the last 10 years and it was literally, uh, well, 2013, somebody, I was at a conference and somebody was doing headshots and they took this picture of me. And then I went to Fiverr and paid five bucks for somebody on the internet to make it into a cartoon. And everybody loved it. They said, like, where'd you get the cartoon? That's great. You know, and then uh, recently, though, I wanted to go with an 8-bit theme and kind of go more retro. So I've got this new 8-bit avatar now. And I got that from Mark on twitter i can't pronounce his last name because i think he lives in the netherlands somewhere and i know i say it wrong but anyway uh that's there on the slide so there's lots of people out there online who will go make a, a clever avatar for you that, that makes it memorable and that's associated with your brand so the other thing you want to do to create your online presence is you're going to uh, establish your credentials you know here's my certifications my job experience you know, here are the products i'm you know whatever the languages i can write in those whatever it is you know here are my tech cred and then something of personal interest you know tell them about a hobby or a, you know with sports or music or personally i do uh, start a new hobby a couple of years ago astrophotography so i take pictures of the stars and nebula and galaxies and stuff so you put some kind of little personal interest in there that, that makes you feel human. You're not just another coder out there that you've got some personality. And then endorsements. Now, where do you get endorsements? Well, as you're interacting with people on social media, you're, you get conference evaluations. People leave comments on your blog or your YouTube videos. And what you do is you create a file of those uh, compliments that people give your content, and you use those as endorsements so that you let other people establish your credibility. And I'll talk about that again here in a, in a minute. So these are just some elements of building a brand. So some things that can help you be successful. Uh, having a mentor. There are tons of people at this event this week that you're meeting. Hopefully you're introducing yourself, having conversations around uh, breakfast, lunch, and dinner tables. And you can identify some people who've been there, maybe that are a few steps ahead of you and they can help mentor you. You want to find a mentor, right? Uh, get involved with content creator communities online. There's lots of places where people are talking about blogging or talking about creating YouTube videos and, and get plugged in with those people. You know, Reddit's full of things like that, right? Uh, and you want to be consistent. I, I chose to make a commitment of once a month, I was going to do a blog post because my blog was my main drive back then. And so uh, every month, 
And sometimes it was, you know, 4.59 p.m. on Friday at the last day of the month. And I was getting that blog post out there because I wanted to make sure that when somebody goes and look at my blog roll, there's not a post from, all right, that was three months ago, eight months ago. Like, uh, this, there's not enough. This guy is not consistent. I'm not going to follow it, right? You got to have this consistent drop, consistent release. These days, at my current employer, I have a web show on YouTube. And so every two weeks, I drop a new web show. And so you want to be consistent. So you create that uh, relationship with their audience that they know that what they're going to get something, you know, on that kind of level. Once a month was good for me because uh, we're all busy. You know, some people do it, you know, once a week, you know, just whatever works for you. Uh, keep a journal of ideas, stories, humor, analogies, things that uh, you run into like, oh, that would work great in a blog post or a video. So write all those things down. So when you get hit a dry spell and you're thinking, what am I going to publish this week? Uh, you, you can go back to that list and just do it, right? Just practice doing it over and over and over, uh, whether that's speaking on stage or making videos or writing. Practice is going to help go a long way. Community and social interaction it's going to be huge. Um, you know, every time you release a piece of content, you're putting it out there on Twitter, LinkedIn, someplace where you've got a community, Reddit, wherever people can find it. And just uh, take the long view. You know, this is not going to happen overnight. And speaking of that, uh, there's this thing uh, that Gartner calls the Gartner hype cycle. I guess it's uh, this guy, Jeremy Kemp, came up with this. And, and I don't know what, how Gartner claimed it, but <clears throat> basically this happens in all areas of life. All right. So think about it this way. you got this idea, all right? This trigger says, hey, I went to this soft skill session. The guy said, you can make a blog or a YouTube channel and you'll be famous and people will know you and it's going to make your career just sail, all right? And you're all excited. And that's called the peak of inflated expectations. I'm going to do this thing, right? And then, and then you get into it a couple of weeks and you're like, oh, wait a minute. This is the trough of disillusionment. Wait, this is hard. There's like really work involved with this. Am I sure I want to do this? And there's a lot of things I just don't know. I'm going to have to learn a lot of things to even make this happen. And so then you, you start crawling up the slope of enlightenment. You learn how to edit video or you learn how to use Grammarly or you, you know, whatever you, you get your blog platform set up through WordPress or something. You got to learn all, climb all these steps and you got to get in, invites to speak at conferences. And then finally you hit what's called the plateau of productivity. And that means I'm just turning that crank. I help somebody. I write it down, put it somewhere people can find it. I just keep turning that crank and that's a plateau of productivity. So I'm telling you this, not just for personal branding, but for anything you do in life, there's going to be that trough of disillusionment. You're like, oh, wait, this is too hard. Never mind. Uh, but you push through that, you learn, you grow, and then you hit this plateau of productivity. And that's where you really start to build a brand. Now, uh, what are some things you need to do to keep your brain going? All right. So review your metrics, uh, set up Google analytics, uh, look at the, or look at your YouTube analytics or your, you know, things like that, that'll tell you what are people uh, consuming that I've created and published. And then see, uh, there you'll be a lot. There are always surprises. Like I didn't think that, you know, I was on, I was on a bad day and I wrote this little post and a oh, whole, wow, it became the number one for some reason. Why, you know, you go study that. Um, and you file your kudos, right? Endorse your credibility. Use that later. Uh, also to justify your effort. You know, if you're, if you're using maybe some work time on this even, and uh, you've got an arrangement with your manager and like, okay, I'll give you a couple hours a week if you want to work on this stuff, because we're, we're benefiting from it too. And so then uh, you say, hey, hey, uh, Ms. Manager, hey, look at this uh, feedback I got. And you can, you know, justify your effort. Or maybe it's uh, Ms. Uh, spouse, Mr. and Mrs. Spouse at home. And, and they're like, well, you, you put a lot of time in this after work, you know, it's like, well, look, look at the impact that I'm having. Right. And it's also good for you to remember those kudos, just because sometimes you're going to have a bad day. And it's like, why am I doing this? And you realize, oh, wait, there's really people out there who are really being helped. Um, answer comments wherever you're posting, you know, keep the conversation going, right? And there's this thing called the long tail of accumulated content. So what happens is after you've been turning that crank, you help somebody, you record it, you put it somewhere people can find it, right? And you keep putting stuff out there. And before you know it, 
the search engines, right, start to rank your content for those niche topics. Your name starts to come up more and people start to find you and that's called the long tail. And so now I've got, uh, let's say, just 50 hits a month on the each blog post. Well, it's like putting money in the bank, you know, 50 hits on one blog post, but then 50 hits on 20 blog posts. And all of a sudden, you've got a lot more hits coming in and it grows over time. That's called the long tail. And I would still get, I would get messages from people, you know, about stuff I'd written five, 10 years ago. And uh, I'm like, Oh, wow. I, I don't, I wrote it down on purpose. So I would remember, let me go read the blog post again and see if I can answer your question. <laughs> you know, it's just been out there for a while. And then you have to promote your content occasionally. Um, and, and the way I think of this is not being, you know, vain and self-promoting, but it's like, you know, I invested the time and effort to solve a real problem that, that I was struggling with. And I know there's other people that have that problem. I want to help them find it. So how can I put it where other people can find it, right? And get it out there. There's a book called Superfans by Pat Flynn. Really good book. I recommend it if you want to think about uh, publishing online and building a community. So now I want to tell you about some things I got right, some things I got wrong. All right. There's, I, I did this for years and I'm still doing it. Um, I've just changed my, my niche is now completely different, but uh, I'm still doing it. But there, there's some things I did right, and some things I did wrong. So here's some things I got right. Number one, just do good work, right? Uh, real world solutions that people need. Uh, you're struggling with it. hundred other people are going to have the same pr trouble. Uh, whether it's a scripting technique, you know, maybe you're the PowerShell hash table guru. And you know, every which way, you know, five or six different ways that you can apply hash tables and how they're used in PowerShell. Maybe that's your niche, right? That you're going to be really good at that thing and you're going to put it out there and people are going to find it. So that, that's one thing you can get right. All right. That's pretty easy up front. Um, engaging in the community. Again, conferences, user groups, Twitter, you know, video, wherever that community exists, you know, getting involved there, helping others. Um, highlighting the work of others, right? So uh, you, somebody helps you, you call them out in your video, your blog post, wherever, whatever you're doing and, and build them, build their brand and help them get the credit that they deserve. And then, uh, and then they, they also can do that for you and you can exchange uh, credibility that way and help each other. Add personal flavor. I used to put a lot of 80s references in my, cause I was a child of the 70s and 80s. I'd put lots of uh, references pop culture references the only thing you got to be careful there is just uh watch out for copyrighted images and music you want to be really careful not to violate any copyrights right trademarks but feel free to add that personal flavor whatever that is for you um metrics you know keep an eye on your metrics and use that as your uh proving to yourself and uh, other people in your life who are watching you put time into this, you can say, look, here's the metrics. I can see I'm really impacting others. It's really cool to look at Google Analytics and see there's people in 150 countries that are hitting my content. You know, maybe it's that one guy in Moldova yesterday that found my post, but there's people all around the world getting value out of this. Uh, find your mentor uh, or mentors, follow their advice. That's going to be a big deal to helping you be successful. Um, Ed Wilson, the scripting guy, was my mentor for a long time when I was at Microsoft. Uh, I owe a lot of success to him. He introduced me to the conferences for PowerShell. He introduced me to opportunities and so I, that was a huge benefit to me. And he was paying it forward, investing in me. And then I get to do that like today and help others do the same thing. Uh, catch a tech wave, right? Uh, some new technology that's just coming out. People are, are trying it. They're looking for answers. There's not a lot published on it yet. You can be one of the first and ride that wave, you know, get out there in front of it. I did that with a, working at Microsoft. There was a lot of new technology. I was on the cutting edge and always blogging about the latest thing. And that just impacts the lives of your readers. I, I'll share a little bit more about that later. But uh, it was just very satisfying personally to see that, wow, people are really being helped by this. And that just makes you feel good. So there's a lot of things you can get right about this. Um, things I got wrong. Uh, I had a social media handle tied to my <laughs> former job title. Uh, I talked about myself too much because I'm trying to build my brand. And so here's my stuff. Come see my stuff. 
and uh, drop into a forum, right? Here's my stuff. Come read my stuff. But I don't know anybody in that forum. You get to build a relationship, be part of the community, right? And then then earn the right to speak. And so uh, I did that wrong sometimes. Uh, not following the advice of a mentor. Ed told me to go learn this new particular technology that I just simply didn't have time for and didn't make time for it. And sure enough, I missed a wave uh, that I could have ridden and finally getting the big hit, right? There's like a couple hundred people online that know who I am, but the you know billions of people in the world have no idea who I am. I'm not a celebrity, so don't get the big hit. Um, I actually embarrassed myself uh, re- uh, more than once. Now, if I go out and watch the YouTube videos of where I was presenting at the PowerShell Summit in 2014, 2015, 2016, early days, and I was... Uh, spent the first five minutes of the talk saying, Hey, here's all my stuff. Go find my stuff here. And, and that was just really embarrassing now when I look back at it because I did it wrong. Uh, so I got that wrong. Um, so let's talk about that. The elephant in the room, talking about yourself. Uh, I don't want to be that weird, arrogant, conceited guy in the room. Nobody wants to be that arrogant, conceited person because that just turns everybody off. It's awkward. And I don't like talking about myself necessarily, but sometimes it's uh, necessary. And this talk is kind of odd. Normally, I'm talking about some technology thing. This is the first talk I've given here at this event where there's no code on the screen. And I'm actually the subject and how I built my brand. So I do have to talk about myself in this talk, but normally I don't. Normally, I'll just open up with some kind of a teaser or a hook. Say, you know, like my hook today was, hey, I'm in 2,500 miles from home and these people are staring at me. (laughs) Who are these people, right? That gets your interest, right? And then I just suddenly said, hey, I'm Ashley. Here's my contact information. I got right into the content. Um, That's usually how I do my talks. In this case, my talk is about how I build a brand. So it's a little weird that I'm talking about myself more than normal in this one, but I I don't usually do that. Um, So you want to give attention to the help you're providing, not yourself, right? You know, there's some personal flavor in there, but put the, the focus on the audience and who you're trying to help and the problem you're trying to solve. Uh, there's a guy named Dr. James Whitaker uh, who has an amazing track record and is an amazing speaker. And he will tell you to make your content so good they ask about you afterwards. He said, don't waste time up front talking about yourself. If they really like what you said, then they're going to go find you, right? So don't, don't waste time up front on that. Uh, He's got a YouTube video called How to Rock the Stage. It's really good. Go check it out. And just by the way, he uses some profanity. Just watch out for that. Now, uh, as we're wrapping things up here, I do hope we have a few minutes for questions at the end. Um, I've been reading through the Bible this year, cover to cover, trying to get through it in a year. And uh, Proverbs, these things written 3,000 years ago, it's amazing how much human nature has not changed in 3,000 years. Um, check this out, right? Reputation. So this was, this was written by a guy who was a king. He was supposed to be the wisest guy around and everybody knew that he was the wisest guy around. And so he wrote down all these things and collected all these sayings about how to be wise. And so he says, a good name is to be chosen rather than great riches and favor is better than silver or gold, right? That's your brand, your, your good name. That's your reputation. That is your personal brand. Humility, the reward for humility and the fear of the Lord is riches and honor and life. Humility, right? Now, just like I was talking about, don't get too full of yourself. You're not a celebrity. There's a few people that know your name and you want to, you really enjoy helping them. There's nothing wrong with that. At the same time, you're not going to brag about yourself. Endorsement, right? Let another praise you and not your own mouth, a stranger, not your own lips. This was written 3,000 years ago. And he's telling you to let other people endorse you. Don't be the one talking about yourself. Let other people do it. That's why you collect those kudos and and compliments and feedback that you get as you start to publish stuff. And you just let other people establish your credibility then. And finally, this caution here, the crucible is for silver and the furnace is for gold. And a man is tested by his praise. So once you get popular and uh, you start getting the hits and the views and people are looking at your stuff and it's really easy to kind of believe your own press, as they say, and to kind of get the big head. So be very careful not to become prideful, right? So there's some, there you go, 3,000 year old proverbs on building your personal brand. So how do we do this? The mission, the message, the media, 
My mission is to help people. My message is my niche, my specialty, and the media is all those different options out there for how to publish content, right? So I help people. I record it. I put it somewhere others can find it. I just keep turning that crank, and that's going to build a brand. All right. So some resources for you if you want to take a picture of this slide. By the way, I'm going to give you all these slides here in just a second. So um, Michael Hyatt has a book called Platform. Fantastic. I used this book to build my brand when I got started. Some of the tips that I've given you today come straight out of this book. Another fantastic newer book by Superfans. Actually, Pat Flynn was a student of Michael Hyatt, went to his conferences and everything, and he took it even to a whole new level, Superfans fantastic places online to get your uh, avatars i mentioned fiverr and mark and then there's another guy david neal uh, reverend geek is his title i saw him present uh, i want to say was it automation summit or another event that we had in connection with uh, powershell and did a fantastic presentation but he does also artwork for avatars uh, find your handle search. If you want to do public speaking uh, or video making, even go to Toastmasters. It's, it's uh, a really low cost, fantastic way to build your speaking abilities. I highly recommend it. And connect with me on LinkedIn and Twitter if you'd like to continue this conversation. So I want to wrap up here and save just a minute for questions. Um, so when I left Microsoft back in 2017, I sent out that email that everybody sends, you know, hey, let's be friends. We Here's my contact information. Thank you for, you know, Sloan and thanks for all the fish, you know, Hitchhiker's Guide, right? Thanks for, for making my career great. I've really enjoyed working with you all. And I got this reply back from somebody that said, thank you for all your contributions to the community. Your work has had a tremendous impact. Here's a 30,000 foot view of how it helped my career. It helped me get out of a bad job into a good one. It caused an employer to create a new position to promote me into. And I had enough fun with it that I put PowerShell enthusiasts on my LinkedIn profile, resulting in a cold call from my current employer, Microsoft. Best wishes in your future endeavors, David. I had no, I've never met this person. I don't really know them, but I made an impact in their life. I helped them. And that is satisfying. There are a few things you can do in life that have that level of satisfaction. So when you're thinking about um, just putting content out there again, I, I, just, I did not start out to build a personal brand. It just happened. I noticed I was helping people and people started paying attention and I helped more people and, be, and it kind of just grew on its own. And so I ended up speaking at events, creating videos, writing blog posts, and you can do the same thing. You don't need a career at Microsoft to do that. You can do that wherever you work right now, and you can begin to have an impact on people. Um, and one of the things I, I miss about being at the PowerShell Summit this week is being able to connect with people like this. And uh, I can uh, help contribute directly into their lives. And then I can also hear um, how the content has been helpful for them. So uh, if you like this uh, talk, it was helpful for you today, you can get a copy of these slides out on my GitHub. Uh, there it is, github.com slash go TPFE PowerShell Summit 2022. And that's my talk. So you, you can build your personal brand, you help people, you record it, you put it somewhere people can find it. So we got a couple minutes here. It's good to see everybody in the room. I'd love to uh, answer any questions you have or continue this conversation out on Twitter or in the Slack channel for uh, the event. So uh, any questions in the room? You mentioned you weren't going to get into the, uh, the, the different blogging platforms, but can you share uh, what you're using? So when I had my blog at Microsoft, it was on TechNet. So it was their platform. Um, I've used uh, Word and and there even they they had a, an internal blogging platform and then they ended up on WordPress, which was beautiful. And I don't know what they use now, um, but WordPress is usually where a lot of people get started. You can get a free WordPress blog at WordPress.org uh, with a subdomain uh, that can be whatever you want. And a lot of people will register a domain and and point it to a paid instance of WordPress. There's uh, GitHub uh, has an option. There's uh, LinkedIn even has blogging options, but usually you want something that you've got creative control over. You can just lease a, a, a cheap Linux box online. There's tons of providers out there. 
And so, uh, yeah, just, just find something that, that works for you and the level of effort that you're willing to put into it, you know, how much time you have to put into it. It's a big, big factor as well. Talk to people here. There's lots of people here with blogs, ask them what they use. So the question is, how do you maintain consistency? And you're right. It's a commitment. It's, it's, a, it's a brute force commitment. You just have to do it. And that's why I said to keep a journal as you have ideas, uh, problems that you're solving, you know, frequently ask questions that you get, uh, whether it's at work or online, uh, in the community, uh, pour into those topics. And that usually will create a, a good enough flow. You know, like I said, once a month is what I chose uh, because, because of that. I didn't want to put too much content out there where it's a grind for me, but that was enough to be comfortable. It worked with my schedule. It wasn't over, you know, too demanding on my work or family, either one to do once a month. And so, yeah, uh, you know, whatever you're, you know, whatever you're learning, you know, go back through the slides, look at all those topics um, and, as you build your niche, the intersection of those two specialties, you can begin to cultivate that with, uh, you know, teaching topics, examples, lots of things that you can use to create the content. If there's nothing top of mind, you can usually come up with something that's unique to that niche. So anything I'm curious to know, I know we're, we're at time here. Uh, you're welcome to, to head out and leave a I uh, eval anytime you like, but I am curious to know, is there anything particular day that you found most helpful? Mm, so what was the one that got away? Um, you know, Microsoft changes product names uh, like you change your socks. So I'm sure the product name has changed since then. It was, it was their new uh, OMS, EMS, some kind of management platform thing. I don't remember. It's been several years now. But uh, yeah, I kind of missed the boat on that one because he knew he was retiring and I didn't know that. And he knew that there would be some shoes to fill. And uh, there's, yeah, the, so there's, yeah, there's a lot more stories I could tell, obviously, over uh, a nice beverage. Uh, so maybe, uh, maybe next year, uh, you know, hopefully we'll be in person. I'll, hopefully I'll be able to be there in person next year and uh, we could do that. Or we can continue a conversation on LinkedIn or Twitter. What got me through the crucible, I would say, is uh, having a good mentor who could call me, call my, you know, call me up and say, "Look, I heard, I heard you said this thing at this event last week, and I don't think that went over too well. You should probably rethink that." I'm like, oh yeah, you're right. Oh man, that didn't go over too well. I kind of stuck my foot in my mouth on stage, and so you can have those honest, brutal conversations with your mentor. And they can help you through that. They've been there before. They've done it. They've, uh, they've recovered. And so mentors uh, can help. And also just going to ask forgiveness. Uh, if, if you can't, I wasn't able to do that in a particular situation where I really stuck my foot in my mouth. But uh, if it's, especially if it's on a more personal level or, or, you know, writing a retraction, you know, or, you know, publishing something that, uh, you know, just admitting your faults and that you're wrong in public is uh, people will really uh, latch onto that uh, because people uh, like to see how you succeeded, but even more, they can identify with your failures because we've all tried and failed. And you really have to be vulnerable and share that part as well. Don't just share your successes, share your failures, and people really follow that because they can connect a little easier sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thanks, everybody. I know we're over time. Hopefully, you can get to the next session uh, and enjoy the rest of the summit.